Hey everybody, so my name is Justin White here. I'm a one-star double platinum with the team. Just filling in with Courtney and Diane for Marnie today for this certificate training. Today we're going to be covering Denmark, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we get registered for it. First thing that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to go to travelagentacademy.com. So you go ahead and go to travelagentacademy.com. Let me put it in the chat box again for anybody that just joined. Can everybody see that in the chat box now? Awesome. So make sure if you are not already, you want to make sure that you sign up for Travel Agent Academy. You have to be signed up in order to do this training. So I want to give everybody just a couple of minutes to make sure that everybody gets signed up for it. So everybody should be able to see my screen. And you're just going to click on sign up and fill out the basic information. It's really easy to fill it out. It's very simple. It takes just a second. So I will give a little bit of time for anybody to do that. I'm going to go ahead and actually log in myself. Right. And again, like I said, what we're going to be covering today is Denmark. So once you sign up and you've already signed in, you're going to scroll down to where it says newest courses and you're going to click on visit Denmark and get started. And this should be where we're at. I just want to make sure everybody has been able to register and we're all on the same page before moving on. So if you can go ahead and put in the chat box, if you're already registered, ready to go, go ahead and put that in the chat box so that I know everybody's registered real quick. You'll also probably have to sign up here. If you do, you can just sign up there as well. It just takes just a second. All right, I see some chats coming in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we got a few people ready. It looks like we're still having a maybe a few people that's waiting. We'll give it just a few minutes. Don't want to wait too, too long. Anytime that we're doing these certification trainings, please make sure that if you obviously, once you've done it once, you're already registered, so it's not too bad. We want to make sure everybody gets registered for it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Then once you're ready to get going, let me know, um, and we will we'll start the, the course. I don't want to start before y'all. Um, also, what will help you is anybody that's joining today, if you watch this on maybe your phone, and then you can actually do the training at the same time on your computer. Um, that way, you're not having to minimize this or anything like that. So if anybody wants to jump on their phone real quick just to watch the Zoom so you can see what the trainings are, um, that way you can kind of walk through the process as well. So we'll just have to get started. All right, so we are going to, is everybody good? Do I need to wait for anybody else? All right, I'm not seeing anybody say anything. So we will go ahead and get started. So again, what you're gonna do, go to that Travel Agent Academy, log in, under the new section, click on Denmark, and then we'll get started right here. All right, looks like everybody's ready, so we'll go ahead. Can everybody see and hear my screen okay? Can everybody hear the, the sound? Oops. Awesome. All right, and again, we're gonna go through this as a group. So please, everybody pay attention because when we get to the quiz parts, we're gonna try to help you clear out, make sure that we get through this and pass everything good. As it says, Denmark is one of the world's happiest and most livable countries. And this course will teach you about Denmark, how to get to Denmark and all about Danish culture and many wonderful experiences that are only waiting to be discovered. On the next slide, you can watch Chris and Kyle like through Denmark, we have skipped the call on our front page. Go ahead and start the lesson.
go ahead and put that part. Everybody hear me okay still with the background noise? Okay. So it says Denmark is known as the gateway to Scandinavia. There are direct flights from the U.S. to Copenhagen from 11 major American airports, including JFK, EWR, EOS. Here, here's on the background. It is the background music. Um, is that better? Can everybody still hear me okay? Is that? Yeah, that's good. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So there's the airport codes that they actually set, um, that they actually do flights from. While Copenhagen is the busiest airport in Denmark airports in Aarhus, Bill, I'm gonna butcher all these names. So those places, let's just do it that way, make it easy to, to quickly travel around the country. You can fly to one of Denmark's five major airports from many other cities across the US with only one layover, such as Cleveland, Atlanta, Dallas, Denver, Minneapolis, Seattle and Anchorage, to name a few. Check the major code sharing agreements with your preferred airline to find the best route for you. Greenland and Faroe Islands are both part of the Kingdom of Denmark, but they have automated on Thomas self-rule. All right. So now anybody else that wants to read, go ahead and jump in. So I'm not having to read all this because obviously I'm gonna butcher these words anyway. <laughs> Sure, I'll, I'll try it. Awesome. I'm, I'm not any better at Danish. I took Latin and Greek, so. <laughs> okay, a Denmark size. Denmark is smaller than what most people think. You can fly across the whole country in 45 minutes, drive through the country in four to five hours, and get from Copenhagen Airport to the center of Copenhagen in 15 minutes by the metro. If you compare the size of Denmark to the state of Texas, you can really see how small it is. If you drive through the state of Texas, it takes 12 hours to travel the full 870 miles. If you drive through Denmark, it takes four to five hours to drive the full 324 miles. This is one of the benefits of this is one of the benefits of Denmark, as that means that your clients can see a lot of different experiences of one vacation. You can explore the hip city of Copenhagen, go out to the seaside and indulge in fresh seafood, and then drive to a castle and spend the night, or even return to Copenhagen. I'll see the map there. Okay, next. Okay. Who's next? I'll go ahead and take a shot at it. Okay. Uh, Denmark is the smallest and southernmost of the Scandinavian countries. It takes up a short of 43,000 square kilometers, and the population is roughly 5.8 million people. And the capital city, Copenhagen, has around 1 million inhabitants. Denmark has a milder hot climate than what most people think. Not all winters have snow. New York winters are much colder than Danish winters. And in summer, you can even go swimming in the sea. Copenhagen is the capital, but with the short travel distance, there is no more than two hours between each of the four main cities, Copenhagen, Odense, I, I, Athras, <laughs> Aalborg. Um, the terrain is mainly flat with few hills and with its temperature climate, you get four different seasons in Denmark, but the temperatures are mild even in winter. Denmark has more than 7,300 kilometers of coastline, which consists mainly of white sandy beaches. In summertime, you can go for a swim, try kite surfing, paddleboarding, or regular surfing. In wintertime, you will find brave Danes embarking upon a frosty winter dip, or you know, you can call them Vikings too. <laughs> awesome, great job, thank you. All right, anybody else? Denmark oh. has been a kingdom since approximately 900 BCE. And in 1849, it became a constitutional monarchy. The currency is Danish kroner, DKK, and the official language is Danish, although English is widely spoken. The four main cities are Copenhagen, which is the capital, Eris, Odense, or whatever, help me out here, Elborg. Sounds great <laughs> <Denmark>, to me. <laughs> Denmark is world famous for its Danish design, both in fashion, 
furniture and architecture. Within the last 10 years, Denmark has also become Scandinavia's gastronomic capital. As the home of new Nordic cuisine and a total number of 33 Michelin stars and 25 star studded restaurants to choose from. One of the most famous restaurants in Denmark is Noma, former world's best restaurant and catalyzer for the new Nordic food movement. Noma 2.0 is now open in Copenhagen, hippiest neighborhood. Okay, here we go. Ref <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Now the thing is when we get to the quiz part, trying to remember how these names are pronounced. All right. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? We're doing good so far. I'll, I'll right. go again. Awesome. Go ahead. Okay. As mentioned, Denmark has more than 7,300 kilometers of coastline, mainly white sandy beaches. Beachgoers and bold surfers can have a go at the crashing waves at cold Hawaii, which is situated in the UNESCO National Park, National Park Thai, Thai in Denmark, in Denmark's northernmost region, North uh, Jutland. The fact that Denmark is surrounded by water means that they have a range of good seafood. If your clients want to enjoy something really fresh, then head to the southwest part of the mainland, Jut mainland Jutland, where you can pick oysters at an oyster safari. If, you're, if you are lucky, your guide might even bring champagne to accompany your feast. Whilst learning about the importance of the UNESCO area of the Waden, Waden, Waden Sea. If your clients do not wish to get into the water, then have a look at the option to watch the nature spectacle. Black sun, where starlings gather and create beautiful patterns and formations in the sky. If you prefer to relax and wind down, then Denmark is dotted with old-timey seaside hotels, such as Villa Vest and Zvinklov, sure, uh, home of the world's best chef 2020, where the main goal is to relax, put your feet up, enjoy good food, enjoy the fresh air and nature around you. Cozy holiday cabins are also peppered along the coastline, serving as popular vacation spots to the Danes. At the next slide, you can see a video of some of the Danish coastal experiences that are just waiting for your clients to explore. Awesome. Looks like the video is unavailable, but I think we can actually go back and look at this a little bit later. I think we'll still be okay. It's on a lot of them. It's what, Diane? It's on a lot of them that the video is unavailable. Okay. It's probably my issue. I should have started with Google Chrome, so I apologize to you. I'll start with Safari. All right, so one of our first questions we got. How many U.S. airports have direct flights to Copenhagen? 11. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Perfect. All right, everybody get that? Good. Next question. What countries are part of the Kingdom of Denmark? Any guesses? It's Denmark, the last Norway, one. Sweden? Oh. Last one. Okay. Awesome. Which city is Denmark's capital? Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Awesome. Very good, everybody. The landscape in Denmark is mainly flat with hills. Awesome. Name the Danish currency. Euro. Nope. Danish. No, they're, they're DKK. Well, they're the D first D one, DKK. Oh. Yep. Very good. DKK. Current. Last one. The Danish coastline is mainly made up of white sandy white beaches. Sandy beaches. White there we sandy. Go. Awesome. So everybody should have just had a hundred. Very good. Everybody did a great job on that. So we're a quarter way through. Not too bad. In Seventeen minutes. Everybody's doing great. We just keep everybody in, engaged and, and talking through. We'll be good. All right, so the next one. All right. Is that still, is that too loud again? A little bit. What about that? That's good. <laughs> oh, now I can't hear y'all. Oh, goodness. Uh, hold on, Let's see if this works. Does that work? <laughs> the, can you hear you? Okay, that's good. Uh, there we go. Does that work? That works. All right. Awesome. Sorry about that. 
All right. Does um, anybody want to start with this one? I can do it. Awesome. Um, Go ahead. Copenhagen, Denmark's capital city, is home to some of the best restaurants, bars, and museums in Scandinavia and the world. Copenhagen is also home to the second oldest amusement park in the world, Tivoli Gardens, which is which is now operates with four seasons, four opening seasons. Um, gastronomy, design, biking, livability, agriculture, and happiness are all themes that draw visitors to our capital city. Even though Cal Copenhagen is a capital, it is still a small city when compared to most other capitals. The city has more bikes than cars and biking is the preferred mode of transportation. If your clients are not comfortable on two wheels, then Copenhagen now has good news. In 2019, the city expanded their metro circle, so now visitors can explore the many interesting neighborhoods, most of which can be reached with within five to 15 minutes without biking. Below are some examples of neighborhoods to visit. Okay, Vesterbro is Copenhagen's um, edgiest quarter with its own meatpacking district with gritty bars and fine dining side by side the area just behind Copenhagen Central Station and Tivoli Gardens. Nor uh, Norbro is Copenhagen's multicultural heart and visitors can taste their way through the buzzing ja Jaggerborg gate that it even has its own Michelin starred restaurant. Osterbro is laid back and trendy area dotted with green spaces and great shopping. Say hello to the little mermaid on her rock in the in the sea nearby. Fredericksburg is a pocket calm and ch uh, ch chic, no chic, close to the city center. Take a coffee and go on a stroll in the Grand Royal Park. Fredericksburg Gardens and go explore the hidden underground literally art space. Uh, Cistrums. Amagur is across the harbor from Nathan and both beaches and outdoor spaces. From Amagur, you can walk to the old town of Christian's fun. The city center contains Hope Copenhagen's unmissable bites, enjoy royal palaces, Tivoli, and world class shopping. Awesome. Thank you. Did you already watch that? My name is Camilla Saita. I'm from Copenhagen. I've been living in uh, La Paz for almost six years and recently moved back to Copenhagen. Moving back was incredible. It really felt like coming home. So my favorite thing to do in the morning is start out by taking a walk with Papito. We love to walk around the ramparts. I like to cycle around Copenhagen because it's the best way to get around. And Christian Sound is like walking in a history book. Lille Bakery is situated at Refshaleøen, which is impossible for tourists to pronounce. They don't have a big selection of things, but what they do, they do to perfection. Sharing a meal and eating together is, is definitely a very important part of the Danish lifestyle. So Torhallen is this wonderful food market. I go there because you can have a little bit of everything and get inspiration for dinner. The Lola project, I feel like calling it. We're going to have a social impact part. We're going to have a restaurant. We're going to have communal dinings. So you share, you pass over the plate. And that's kind of the vibe that we want to create. Lola is aiming to be the restaurant of the future. Awesome. Looks like fun. All right. Anybody want to go on this one? Anybody that hasn't done one yet? I don't feel bad. We're all butchering the name, so. <laughs> all right, so 
Aris is Denmark's second largest city with a population of 336,000 people. It's a vibrant universal university city. Every fifth inhabitant is a student. In 2017, it was European's capital of culture and the city developed a lot during this process, making the city even more exciting to visit. A famous Insta-worthy site, Your Rainbow Paranormal by Mr. Layson, situated on the top of the art museum where you can walk with a 360 view in all color spectrums. Visit Mosgrade, a Viking and history museum in a contemporary architectural building or step back in time at the Old Town City Museum to meet the locals stroll through the Latina Quarter. If you wish to enjoy the lush forest lands around then head out to the Infinity Bridge. Arias has four Michelin starred restaurants and two Bib Gourmet restaurants. You can fly from Copenhagen to it um, with a seaplane in 45 minutes or drive in three hours. Why not stop at Ribby, Denmark's Otis City and get a sense of the rich Danish history? Looks pretty cool. After we all do this training, we all pass. We're all going to take a fam trip to Denmark, right? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. All right. Anybody else want to read this one? I'll read this one. Thank you. Uh, Odense is the place of literary wonder, and it is the main city on the island of Funen, the cozy city, the birthplace of the world's most famous writer of fairy tales, Hans Christian Andersen, and a trip to explore the cobbled streets of his childhood home and the Hans Christian Andersen Museum is real step back in time. Visitors can even step right into his birthplace and the city is dotted with cobbled streets and half timbered houses. Some with fully functioning workplaces or workshops and some with highly high quality restaurants. In 2021, Odense will open the doors to a brand new HC Andersen Museum designed by Japanese architect Kingo Kumba the museum will also be the new location of the Tinderbox Children's Center that is themed around Anderson's fairy tales. The museum constructed as wooden uh, concentrate circles will feature a landscaped en enchanted garden complete with fairy tale maze. Click next to see the short video about Odense.
Anybody else? I'll read this one. All right. The capital of the northernmost region in Denmark, North Jutland, is Aalborg, which is also Denmark's fourth largest city. In recent years, Aalborg has gone through rapid city development, and the city is home to world famous buildings such as Kunsten Museum of Modern Art, the only Alvar Alto Museum building outside Finland, and the Utsan Center. The latter is the last project done by the acclaimed architect Jorn Utsan, who was born in Alberg and who went to design the famous Sydney Opera House. Alberg was on the New York Times Places to Go in 2020, and the city is developing its gastronomy, gastronomy scene, cultural offers, and architecture in rapid speed while keeping at bay with its historical side. With several weekly direct flights from Copenhagen, London, Amsterdam, and Oslo to Aalborg Airport, the area is easily accessible. From Aalborg, you can even sail to Leso, an island between Sweden and Denmark, and sample some of Denmark's best salt and learn about seaweed thatched roofs. Click next to see a short video from North Jutland. That was a short one. All right, here we go. What are the names of Denmark's four major cities? Jutland, uh, Copenhagen. Um, Mens, Aras, and Alborg. The third one. All right. Oh, that was long. All right. You can redo it, Justin. Hit the blue circle. It's Copenhagen, Odense, Aarhus, and Aalborg. Awesome. All right. When did the new Metro Ring open? Any guesses? I think it's I missed one on this. So I think it's 2019. Yeah, I think it's 2019. Very good. What is the name of the rainbow on the top of Aris Museum? It's the second one, the rainbow uh, panorama. Very good. Where is the architect born from? That was the Odensa one. Very good. Is that even on there? No, that was yeah, yeah, it is. Isn't it Alborg? No, it's Odensa. It's Alborg. All board. All board, because that was like the last oh, slide. Chris Hans, the Hans that might be the one I missed. Hans Christian Andersen Odense, I thought. Uh, Odense is HC, yeah. Okay. This is HC Anderson Museum. Oh, we were talking about another museum. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Did everybody get 100%? Yep. Yes. All right, so the next one. Anybody want to read this one? Sure, I'll take it. Sure. As you learn, Aalborg is the main city of North Jutland, a region also known as the Land of Light. Throughout centuries, painters from all over the world have journeyed there to paint because of the beautiful light around Skagen, Skagen the northernmost town of, the con of continental Europe. The northern part of Jutland is about as remote as you can get in Denmark. Famous for the wide beaches and its wild and wonderful nature, this place is only a few hours from Copenhagen by car, and it has an international airport, airport in Aalborg, AAL. The shifting sands in the region create unique experiences such as the traveling sand dune, Rob Jurg Mile, the Berry Church, as well as Rube, Rube Jurg Nude Lighthouse, Can you, something like that. 
which was recently moved inland on a big roller skate to prevent it from falling into the sea. Mm -hmm. The capital of the region is Aalborg, which is Denmark's fourth largest city. The region boasts some of the best seafood in Denmark, as well as picturesque seaside hotels. The region is home to one of Denmark's most famous seaside hotels, Svinklov Bade Hotel, which is also home to the world's best chef 2020. The Danish royal family visits to enjoy the hotel's famous walnut layered cake. With several weekly direct flights from Copenhagen, London, Amsterdam, and Oslo to Aalborg Airport, the area is easily accessible. From Aalborg, you can even sail to Lyso, an island between Sweden and Denmark and sample some of Denmark's best salt and learn about seaweed thatched roofs. On the next slide, you can watch how the lighthouse mover moved Rubjerg nude on a large roller skate. That I wanna see. I was gonna say, this should be pretty cool. A few a Denmark. Mit navn det er Kjell Pedersen. Jeg er mor. Jeg er mor af hele mit hjerte. Og jeg elsker det område, som, som vi bor i her rundt omkring Lønstrup. Jeg har haft mit virke her igennem 34 år. Fyret for mig har altid haft en kæmpe, kæmpe betydning, fordi at det er et sted, hvor man kan gå hen, hvis man har, hvis man har noget, man går og tænker på. Gå op til fyret, og jeg får sige det blæst hovedet igen, så når man går derfra, så har man øh, fred og ro i sinde. Jeg synes, det er sådan en rigtig, rigtig vigtig ting, at man, man kan det her og lade. Altså naturen, det er den bedste psykolog, jeg kender. Jamen, I første omgang, der blev jeg bedt om at, og, hvad det, at øh, vælte fyret, altså fjerne det fra, fra grunden, fordi at øh, Skov og Naturstyrelsen, som jeg er fyret, de, de skal jo fjerne deres ting, inden de styrer ned på stranden. Jeg regnede så lidt på at få fyret sprængt og væltet, ligesom man vælter siloer og sådan nogle ting. Men en dag, der, der kom den der skøre tanke med, at jeg vide, om man kunne flytte det. Og så fik jeg fat i Johnson fra BMS, og han forklarede mig, at det gjorde man på rulleskøjter og med donkræfter og nogle svære jernbjælter, som man satte ind igennem fyret. Så gav vi faktisk en anden håndslag op på toppen af fyret, på at sådan gør vi det, og det helst vi bare er med, og det var sådan det var. Det er rigtig, rigtig vigtigt, at, at vi bevarer fyret, og, og det er fordi, at den der helt, helt specielle klit, der er derude, det tror jeg ikke, der er så mange, der vil opleve den, hvis ikke fyret var det. Fyret er i princippet ikke særlig specielt, der er rigtig mange fyre i Danmark. Men så har man ligesom et sted at gå hen til, og så får man den der unikke naturoplevelse. Jeg er selvfølgelig utrolig taknemmelig for, at jeg har fået den opgave, fordi at det er jo ikke normalt, at man retter henvendelse til et firma, hvor der kun er én mand i. Der er ingen tvivl om, at du vil fejre det med en, en lille dram og et glas champagne og, og lidt godt og klappe hinanden lidt på ryggen af alle, alle, alle gutterne og bare, bare vide, at vi kan nyde fyret i, i 35-40 år frem efter. So that's not exactly how I was expecting this roller skate to look when they were rolling it, but it's still pretty cool. I was expecting like this big roller skate, you know, you just push it or something like that. Yeah, same here. I was <laughs> like, oh, real construction equipment. Okay, never mind. Yeah, to me, this is like where they, you just take a board at the very end and you slide it in front of the next thing. You keep pushing and you do it again. So, yeah. Anybody want to read this one? I'll take it. All right. Bornholm is Denmark's easternmost island located in the Baltic Sea off the Swedish coast. Despite lying off the coast of Sweden in the Baltic Sea, Hornum is actually not far from Copenhagen. You can fly from here in just 35 minutes or drive across our famous disappearing bridge to Sweden and take the ferry from Jotstedt to Rhone. Borum has as thriving art scene, gastronomy scene and relaxing hotels where you can enjoy the sea view. Visit Kadu to experience the contemporary gastronomy scene on the island, sample some smoked fish from smoking houses, 
only found in Borum and check out the round churches also found in Borum. Borum is the Danish favorite summer destination. And in recent years, famous chefs have opened up shop on the island and serve locally produced delicacies from small quaint restaurants and beach huts. The main town in Rhone, one of the most picturesque towns are Guanham, okay, Hammerus <laughs> ruins, is the largest castle ruin in Northern Europe and Morham has the only cliffs in Denmark. For the history buffs, sail to Christianso, which is a fortress from the 1600s. Wow. All right, anybody want to cover North Zealand? Seems like an easy name to say, at least. <laughs> I can do this one. All right, go ahead, Brenda. North Zealand is the region just north of Copenhagen. It's known as the Danish Riviera, a place for culture, castles, and coastline. The most famous town in is Elstinor, 45 minutes from Copenhagen by train, home of UNESCO site Kronborg, the castle Shakespeare used as the setting for Hamlet. Right next to the Kronborg, you find the MS Maritime Museum, which has won several awards for their museum building. Book a historic walking tour of Elsinore to learn more about the historical significance of the town. North Zealand is also home to some of Denmark's best seaside hotels, such as Helena Kildi, Bada Hotel and Gyeongyi Bada Hotel, where gastronomy, relaxation, and nature merges into one. South of S. Elsinore, you find Denmark's most popular museum, Louis Louisiana Museum of Modern Art, aptly named about the founders' three wives, all named Louise. The Karen Bilkson Museum, the Hermitage Castle, as well as luxury hotels such as Kerr Hotel, Scottsborg and Cockadell Castle Hotel. If you venture southwest of Ellisnor, you find the Castle Hotel and Michelin restaurant, Dragsholm Castle. It's even haunted by a ghost. Travel to North Zealand by train or by car. That's pretty cool. South Zealand and men have, has developed a lot of a lot as a destination in recent years. The area has opened the Adventure Park Camp Adventure where you can both go do a workout in the forest or walk slowly up the tower to enjoy the view of the surrounding nature. If you venture a little farther south, you will be at the Onseco site men here you can see Denmark's only white cliffs and visit Scandinavia's first dark sky park. The areas keep developing with things to do and great places to stay. All right. One of Denmark's many hidden wonders is the fact that you can produce wine in Denmark. As mentioned earlier, Denmark has mild climate, more, has a milder climate than what most people expect. Join us on a visit to a one yard in West Zealand. Unfortunately, the video doesn't work though. When is Denmark's bicycle haven with a wealth of designated bike routes? Thun is connected with Zealand by a bridge and a tunnel and is only one and a half hours from Copenhagen. Danes has na have named the island Denmark's Garden Island and with good reason, Putin is dotted with royal gardens such as the gardens of that place castle, other two castles. As you learned earlier, the main city of Putin is Odense, um, the birthplace of the fairy tale writer Hans Christian Andersen. Other postcard towns of Putin are Faborgen and Sivborg. Um, from either, visitors should jump the ferry to visit one of Denmark's pearls, the island of Aro, nestled in su South Fuen Place. There is also an old school wooden boat that picks up guests at the banks of Vatimer Castle and sells people through the South Fuen. 
yeah. Archipelago. Thank you. <laughs> sure. To try a vacation like a Dane, visitors should visit one of FUM's many inns that also boost top restaurants. People with a taste for heights should head to Middles Fart. Yes, that sounds funny in English. And try a bridge walking from Fuen to mainland Guten. You might want to cover the next one. South Jutland has always had a strategically important location as it shares a border with Germany. As a result, the area has developed a fascinating history with buildings, ruins, and remnants from the past. In Denmark, the region is famous for its lavish cafe board or coffee table, which serves up an abundance of traditional cakes. It is also in the region of you find Ribe, the oldest city in Scandinavia. From Ribe, visitors should head to one of Denmark's island gems, Fano, a part of Wood Wade and Sea National Park, and on New York Times, 52 places to go in 2019. In recent years, Fang has been a popular destination to go to go get married. Make sure that you go in the spring or autumn so you can experience the unbelievable black sun phenomenon at the Waden Sea National Park. The black sun occurs when thousands of starlings gather at dusk, drawing amazing dark patterns in the sky. Visitors can also go to an, an oyster safari and help our environment by eating some of our many Danish oysters. A little known fact about Denmark is that Lego is Danish. Uh, go south, a Jutland is home of the original Legoland amusement park, which is located just down the road from Bilnud Airport. This is also where you can find the Lego house, the newest Lego attraction where play and learning is merging. East Jutland is home to Denmark's second largest city, Aris, home to some of Denmark's best museums and restaurants. Just south of the city center, you can visit the summer home of Denmark's queen, Margaretha. If she's home, you can watch the changing of the guards every day at noon. If she's not, you can go, you can explore Marsa Borg's castle, beautiful rose gardens. Close by is the photogenic Infinity, Infinity Bridge. The region is also home to Danish Lakelands, a particularly beautiful part of the country where you can go explore the lakes by kayak and experience breathtaking nature, including Denmark's longest river, Gudenig, and its highest point called Heaven Mountain, which rises 147 meters above sea level. Board one of the world's oldest offshore operational paddle steamers at the town of Skikaborg and sell slowly to for a truly amazing experience, unique experience. East Jutland is also home to the National Park. In the National Park, you will find about 40 to 200 nature types worthy of preserving called habitat areas. And you can practically feel the cultural history at the castle, castle ruins. From here, you can visit one of Denmark's prettiest towns if tough, um, with cobblestone streets and century old half timbered houses, as well as the museum ship built in 1860. All right, North Zealand, the region just north of Copenhagen, has what? North Zealand is the region of the first one. It's the culture one. Castles and coastline. Awesome. All right. North Jutland, the most northern region of Denmark's is known for what? I can't see your screen. Beautiful nature, a natural light like no other. It is that one. Okay. Can everybody see my screen okay? Okay. I'm just blind. <laughs> the island of Fun is the birthplace of Hans. 
the world's famous fairy tale author. Where is Denmark's second largest city? Oh, East Shetland. All right. Awesome. Last question. What is South Jutland, the region just north of Germany, known for? The Legoland. The Legoland. Yeah. That is definitely on my next stop whenever I go there. And I'm not a huge Lego person right now, but that'd be pretty cool. I am totally doing Legoland. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Next one. This is our last one, I believe, or we got one more. I think there's only four. All right. Yeah. Happiness. Just Denmark has been in the top three of the UN World Happiness Reports over the past several years. Danes enjoys high living standards, being a wealth, welfare society with free education, social security, health care, and universal pension. Danes shares a strong sense of togetherness and values in the Danish concept of hygiene. In essence, Haji is a certain sense of happiness and content. It is important to know that Danes may seem reserved and the happiness index is more about being content with their lives rather than flocking through the streets. Copenhagen is the world's most livable city and visitors will see people swimming at the clean harbor baths during summer, people biking, even family cargo bikes around on purpose build elevator bike bridges, people sailing through the canals, as well as people being off work fairly early and enjoying a cup of coffee at one of the many coffee houses. Sounds like an amazing lifestyle. Anybody want to read this one? So I'll take a stab at it. Okay. Okay. Uh, gastronomy. Denmark is the home of the new Nordic cuisine movement and is currently home to no less than 33 Michelin stars divided between 25 star studded restaurants. 16 of these restaurants are in Copenhagen alone. You will also find one on Bornholm, several dotted through Sealand, four in Aros, and a few dotted through mainland Jutland. In North Jutland at Svinklov Seaside Hotel, you will also find the world's best chef. The new Nordic gastronomy is part of the Danish DNA. It is all about having focus on seasonal, locally sourced ingredients. Gastronomy has helped develop certain parts of Denmark and has been a catechalicitor for visiting both the capital, but also more rural parts of Denmark. World-renowned restaurant Noma has reopened in Copenhagen, in Copenhagen as Noma 2.0, focusing on local produce and seasons with vegetables from their own farm at one of Copenhagen's newest neighborhoods, Refshaleon. The emphasis on seasonal produce merged with great attention to Danish design has established Copenhagen and now the rest of Denmark as a global foodie destination. Make sure to try Schmorebrod broad, traditional open-faced sandwiches piled high with delicious toppings. And you of course have to try a Danish when you are in Denmark called Vienna bread. Oh, that's interesting. If you prefer something on the go, do as the Danes do and get a classic Danish hot dog from a hot dog stand and to sound local as for a chocolate milk on the side. Ew, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Vel Beckholm and join us for a visit to Copenhagen's food scene with chef Christian Puglisi at the next slide. A hot dog and chocolate milk? Yeah, I'm not sure about that one either. Nobody else is. <laughs> I wouldn't. This is Kofilisi, and I'm a chef and restaurateur, and we focus on bringing high-level organic produce from the farm to the tables of Copenhagen. Great interest that the new Nordic movement has brought to uh, the Copenhagen food scene has made it very vibrant, and I feel the support from the people here that there's an openness towards uh, new things and uh, an excitement and curiosity about things. And it's a great place to cook today. I really enjoy Copenhagen for its uh, proportionality and its size. There's a lightness to the city. You can just be in and out of and a mobility that like you can move around, you can be here. You can have an easy life without feeling the weight of this huge urban <coughs> deal. City. 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. Cool. Um, to be able to kind of sit back and just enjoy life instead of worrying about making a certain living and stuff. Historic ends. Denmark's historic country ends, Corny and Danish, offer a unique and intimate atmosphere, the perfect choice for an overnight stay or a weekend getaway. In Denmark, there are more than 100 inns with a royal privilege, a special distinction that dates back more than 700 years. In 2086, King Eric Kalippen was tired of looking for places to stay when he traveled. By royal decree, he ordered that inns with food and accommodation fit for a king be established at every mile around Danish countryside. You can still stay in most of these original inns including Denmark's oldest inn, Romelcro, founded in 1198. Many inns have developed exceptional gastronomical reputations, and you can go foraging with the local chefs and taste some of the best food Denmark has to offer. Specific examples are listed there. Whichever inn you choose, you are guaranteed a historic retreat set in Denmark's beautiful countryside. All right, next, anybody else? Danish has been the leading nation in the design field for decades. And many people think design classics when they think Denmark. From Danish furniture to Danish fashion and toys, Denmark continuously produces world-renowned design. Starting in the 1950s with design legends such as Arne Jacobsen and Hans Wegner, Danish design has developed into a strong international brand. The porcelain factory Royal Copenhagen is famous throughout the world and is found in homes throughout Denmark today. Scandinavian and in particular Danish design has become synonymous with timeless style and life lasting quality. D Danish brands keep developing and often will with a focus on quality to reduce the amount of product people throw away. Currently, new Danish brands like Ghani, Bang, and Olufsen, Manny, Fritz Hansen, Bo Concept, Concept, and Reigns are found throughout the US. Design Museum Denmark in Copenhagen offers designs of decorative art, crafts, and industrial designs and exhibits some of the best Danish design of all time. I want to cover architecture. I will. Huh? From Viking long houses and half timbered houses to award winning modern buildings, Denmark is full of interesting and unique architecture. Danish architects like Arne Johns Jacobson and Bjork Ingels and Oliver Eliasson, Danish Icelandic, and Jorn Utzon designer of the Sydney Opera House have left impressive marks on architecture, both in Denmark and abroad. An example of current architecture in Denmark is Copenhill, a waste power plant that burns waste from Copenhagen while, while being a recreational city park where visitors can go skiing, go for a walk, or do rock climbing on the side of the building. Another example are the elevated bike lines and bridges you find throughout Copenhagen. The Danish Architecture Center, DAC, is located in Copenhagen and its main architectural exhibition center in Denmark. Here you can experience a broad range of exhibitions and you can even join one of their many architecture tours through Copenhagen. Another great way to experience the architectural gems of Copenhagen is by going on a canal cruise through the city where you will see the Circle Bridge, the Royal Opera House, and the Black Diamond. Blocks Copenhagen, a new unique building at the waterfront, is showcasing a new way of using the city space and is definitely worth a visit. Join us at the next slide where head architect in Copenhagen, Hagen, Camilla Vanders shows us her city. 
Thank you. My name is Camilla, and I'm the Chief City Architect of Copenhagen. In my everyday life, I get to visit amazing places in the city and really use the entire city as my office. We have a 13 kilometer long bike route all along the harbor front where you're able to swim, to do cultural activities, go to the opera, go to the library, or just have a great time hanging out with friends at a cafe. At La Banquina, you're close to the water, you engage with people swimming. It's just a great place to be. We're continuously developing the access to the harbor front. I've worked for a number of years in Vestapu, and it really, for me, embodies the spirit of Copenhagen. Coming together with friends and families and sharing food is such a basic joy. Absalon is an old church turned into a new communal meeting space that invites the neighborhood in. To me, Copenhagen, it's a place where you feel welcome. Awesome. Anybody want to talk about the bicycle culture? Well, sure. with more than 12,000 kilometers of signposted bicycle routes, gentle terrain, inspirational nature, and short distances between amenities, Denmark is made for cycling. You can even bring your bike on the trains, metros, and overground lines. Tourists can participate in ground bicycle tours in all the bigger cities. And Denmark has a maraud of cycling holidays and self-guided tours with luggage transfer and high-end accommodation. In recent years, local operators have merged the interests of Danish gastronomy and the Danish bike culture in guided bike tours, where you visit mul multiple Copenhagen gastronomy hotspots. Copenhagen has a good range of guided bike tours where they can bring your clients safely around the city, just like a local. All right, what about the Monarch? The Danish monarchy can be traced back to more than 1000 years, making it the world's oldest monarchy. The queen of Denmark, Margrethe, Margrethe? Margarita uh, II is uh, therefore able to count kings like Gorm the Old, deceased 958, 958, and Harold Bluetooth, de deceased 987, among her ancestors. And yes, the technology Bluetooth is named after the Viking king. He was good at complicated political relationships. The monarch of Denmark and the UK Queen Marguerite and the second and Queen Elizabeth the second respectfully are both descendants of Queen Victoria of the UK and King Christensen the ninth of Denmark. Uh, the Danes are proud of their queen and the royal family and they are very committed to the monarchy regime. Most, most Danish castles are open to the public and offer a, few, uh, a unique glimpse of Danish culture and history. In the center of Copenhagen, you will find the Queen's Jewels at Rosenborg Castle and her main residence, uh, Amelienborg, right in the city center. It's even possible to catch a glimpse of the royal family as they bike around Copenhagen and go about their everyday lives in the capital. All right. Throughout the years, Denmark has been? The happiest countries on earth. The happiest. Yeah. What is warm bread? Warm, oh, it's a sandwich. Oh, it's a sandwich. Sandwiches. Yep. Can you stay overnight in a Danish inn? Yes. 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 Danish design has become synonymous with timeless style. Timeless style. Yep. Oh, doing really good. Denmark is the ultimate destination for bicycle tours. Yep. Yep. 
the Danish monarchy can be traced back a thousand years. years. Very good. Good job, everybody. Yeah, that's awesome. Woo. That is it. Looks like everybody should be done on that part. We should have just passed. And yep, that was it. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, I know it's sad that Marnie couldn't be with us, unfortunately, but I'm glad that we were able to step up. Um, I definitely appreciate Courtney and Diane helping out as well and, and offering to make sure that we keep these certifications going on. Hopefully, Marnie will be back for the next one. Um, if not, we'll try to work through and try to get going as well again. Um, if you all have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, but I appreciate everybody joining today. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Um, then we can still stay on if we have any questions or anything like that. So thank you all.